Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, the October 26, 2012, and this is Brian Shannon from AlphaTrends.net. Hope everyone had a good week. It was a rough week for equities, obviously. The S&P 500, um, with that gap down on Tuesday, it's just been kind of grinding uh, in this area, really not doing a whole much of anything in the last four days. Um, it's starting to stabilize, it looks like, and really the, the bigger level of resistance for next week that we're going to want to see it get above is about that 142 level. Let's take a look, actually, at the close numbers first. The S&P 500 lost about one and a half percent, NASDAQ a half a percent. Semiconductors were up 2.3 percent this week and obviously they've been the weak group uh, throughout this year and they've kind of led the market lower. So with them turning around uh, and up again 2.3 percent this week, perhaps we'll see the broader market turn a little bit uh, next week. Um, financials were down two percent and um, let's take a look here a little bit closer. So when we look at the weekly time frame, uh, the market is you know still kind of flirting with the prior highs from earlier in the year we also see here that this 140 level which we were focused on this week um, was basically tested the low uh, today was 140.39 and that's what we've been kind of looking for the market to drift down towards that 140 level and test it so we're there we had a little bit bigger volume today but there's still uh, you know uncertainty here that, uh, that is that we still have this market kind of uh, grinding back and forth and it's going to need to get above 142 uh, for us to have any uh, conviction in the long side for more than a day trade. Uh, you can see that's where we have that five-day moving average as well. But the, the problem is that there's this bigger level of prior support at about 142.80 to 143 in a dime. And that prior support has the potential, of course, to become resistance, as is often the case. What would be uh, good to see is maybe move up towards that level, it digests a little uh, underneath that level, and then is able to break back above 143 and a quarter or so next week. If we were to do that, then it would certainly make things a little bit more bullish. Uh, but right now, we still have to approach this market with a lot of caution. The NASDAQ did recover 19 cents today and it is back above that five day moving average five day moving average still has that downward slope to it and it's at what has been resistance the last two days what we were focused on earlier in the week though was the 66 level so uh, we've got 65 and a half to 66 right now as a little bit of a band of resistance if we get up towards 66 and then pull back to 65 50 65 60 and create that higher low then I think it would be viable above this 66 level but the problem that we had uh, spoken about earlier in the week is that the potential for where this market ha uh, is going to encounter uh, resistance is this prior support at, at 66 and a half. Although we could also look at it this way and we can see that we've been in this really defined downward channel so perhaps we make it up towards the top end of the channel up near 67. I think that's certainly a possibility that this is just one level along the way that a uh, big bigger bounce might be able to uh, provide us. But the NASDAQ this week, we did test and come down through the 200-day moving average. The 200-day moving average is now found um, at, uh, well, where the heck is it? $65.14. So today's low was uh, 64 uh, 65 and this is the area we've been looking at as potential support but there's been no reason for us to buy and still that's the case I think that if you're strictly going on trend alignment that there's no real reason yet to, to buy with conviction however we're maybe just starting to show a little bit of that accumulation process down here and that's where we could uh, you know perhaps begin a bounce up towards uh, again the top end of, of this channel up near maybe 67 next week but it's you know the market got damaged this week it got down to the 200 day moving average it's been damaged the last uh, month and a half or so uh, but this is obviously a bigger level and we have uh, you know this trend line as well that's been in existence since the uh, uh, third quarter lows of 2011 but the you know so we still have to be cautious overall basically if you look at Apple obviously the biggest component we came down very close to the 200 day moving average there so this you know so Apple is uh, um, you know, it, it showed a low of 591 today, 587, uh, 85, $587.85 is the 200-day moving average. So I found a little support just above that uh, key level, obviously. But, the, you know, this prior support offered 
offered uh, or resistance offered no support this week, and we came down and you know into these levels where um, we could even still see. I mean, the possibility is still there for a little bit more of a flush down to 570 before this thing could uh, get us a, 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 a real nice bounce. So um, I, I'm sure a lot of people are, are you know looking for a bounce in Apple and, and trying to get involved at this level. It came down kind of. Uh, you know, we've got, got some, kind of the similar type of uh, downward channel in the uh, in, in um, Apple. It's still showing lower highs and lower lows. So on the intermediate term, we're still in a downtrend. So I don't think it makes sense to buy Apple yet. Um, it you know certainly you know is worth watching. Here's uh, where we saw some support earlier in the week at about six fifteen, and uh, you know it, it's uh, it's now resistance in in that area. So. Um, you know, obviously, keep an eye on Apple. It's important for the rest of the market. We're very close to that 200-day moving average. But um, back to the Nasdaq, you, you, we're pot, we're we're in an area where it appears we should bounce. We've kind of been in an area where it appears we should bounce, but it's just been grinding lower today. We got a little bit uh, more of, of a, uh, a snap back here towards the end of the day. So hopefully that scenario is something that can play out. Uh, you know, if you're looking for a long side action, Russell 2000. Uh, again, we would we had been looking on the longer term at this neckline of the inverted head and shoulders pattern, and you know we came down to the cluster of that uh, uh, 20, 30, and 40 week uh, moving average or the 200 day. And this is you know that that again I'm going to point out that this is why we don't just buy a pattern and and um, uh, look for it to continue up towards the the uh, the goal of that pattern. And in this case, the uh, head and shoulders pattern, which or inverted head and shoulders pattern, which was indicating a target of 91. The market instead, as we know, is pulled back. It's uh, we did test the 200-day moving average in here as well. Today's low of $80.46 was one penny below the 200-day moving average. And this is certainly an area where it appears, you know, we had a little bit of horizontal consolidation in here as well. It appears that this might be an area where a bounce would emerge from. However, we are in this downward uh, channel here as well. It's starting to show maybe a little bit of signs of stability. Uh, near term next week, 82 bucks a share uh, is going to be, you know, this is the, this is the level that's been resistance this week is 82. So we're 75, 85 cents away from that. I'd like to see a rally up towards that and then a pullback that creates a higher low at 81 and a half ish. We get that five day moving average to begin to rise and then from there we could see a bounce maybe towards the 83 and a half area, the top end of the range. But again, we're, you know, we're below declining 10, 20 day moving average. We're below that 50 day moving average. There's just a lot of uncertainty in this market and we have the election coming up very soon here. The, the you know, the positive for the week again was the semiconductors, but there's nothing bullish about this daily chart. At best, we're showing some stabilization on the daily time frame above this prior, uh, important area near, near 30 bucks a share. If we go back to that weekly chart, you know, we've been losing Mostly drawing in this uh, uh, this this trend line as well, and, and kind of calling it a symmetrical triangle. But you know, the bigger resistance up in here, obviously, is uh, expected to be found just below the thirty-two dollar level. So there doesn't appear to be a whole bunch of upside uh, in the semiconductors if they can't continue. You see how they're trapped at this declining twenty-day moving average. So you know, it is is good as it is to see the the semiconductors. What was up two and a half percent? 2.3% this week. There's really nothing bullish going on here. We saw resistance uh, up in here near term at about this 3120 level. So that's going to be an important level for next week. But, you know, it's we, we have a higher high and a higher low right now that you can protect yourself against for an intermediate term trade. But with, with the daily chart looking as bad as it is, I wouldn't expect more than about 32 on the upside if the semiconductors can continue uh, with this little ascent that's um, developing now. Um, so it's just it's still very difficult to trust, in other words. Financials were down eight pennies today. They did come down uh, through this uh, prior low and tested the 50-day moving average. So this is the first test of the 50-day moving average since we've been above it uh, in late uh, late August, uh, or I'm sorry, late July, early August. And, you know, the, the, the financials have been... Uh, 
you know, really behaving much better than the overall market um, for the last uh, month or so. And they are still just kind of neutral on that daily time frame in here. This 1580, it's nice to see that held, but uh, we need a, a little bit more time to heal for the financials. Um, even things like gold, you know, gold is, is it, it not found support at the 50 day moving average the way a lot of people thought it would. Instead, you know, the people that bought that day, the next day it gapped down big and we've, we, we've maintained below that so you know the, the gold chart the weekly it, it looks like it should be maybe finding some support in this level and then perhaps going to build for uh, you know build, perhaps it's building the uh, the bottom of a right shoulder here in fact uh, that could lead to a, you know from this point uh, if, if we get some strength back up towards that 174 ish level and then break out it doesn't look like there's any the, the problem is there's no evidence of that yet the day Daily chart hasn't shown this, the proper stability. Neither have these intraday time frames, where it's very clear with the five, ten, and twenty-day moving average that we remain below those and they're declining. So we want to see the market recover a little bit. Uh, and it's it, again, it's going to take time to do that before it's going to be in a position, I think, to be able to. Um, uh, continue to rally. So the market absorbed a lot of uh, earnings this week. It didn't get destroyed, but uh, it was a pretty negative uh, week overall. The advanced decline line was horrible all week, and there are still disasters. And you know, today I saw this the deck uh, got got destroyed um, uh, here with a gap down. And this is again just showing you, you know, a stock like deck that you can try to pick the bottoms in in these uh, broken momentum names, but there's just you know they they're in these longer term downtrends. They're in people are just getting hurt very badly. They get excited. You know a lot of people get excited when we're above the 50 day moving average for a period of time. But all these rallies continue to uh, to to um, uh, d get destroyed. And um, you know Verisign uh, here in another earnings related disaster from today. So there's still a lot of risk in this market. One you know one something I was explaining at uh, Oktoberfest today was this CLF. And CLF earlier in the week looked like a beautiful pullback to uh, the rising 10-day moving average. And it was a low-volume pullback after a big volume event over here. And then we looked at the 30-minute time frame and I was saying, you know, we had on uh, on Wednesday uh, a rally up to the five-day moving average where when, when in fact that day it actually uh, took out the prior day's high, which gets a lot of people involved sometimes. But I was telling subscribers that, you know, with it below the declining five day moving average, let's wait for it to kind of stabilize in here a little bit. And what we were looking for was something more to the tune of, of this and then to buy uh, strength above this little level of resistance. At that point, the five day moving average would have flattened out, created a higher high at this point. So it never gave a proper buy opportunity. And if you're buying early in this market, in particular when we have earnings, uh, that, you know, this is the type of thing that can happen. Those early purchases, the cheap buys, in other words, they work great in a, in a bullish trending, uh, market. But where we have this kind of uncertainty, especially in the earnings season, um, you're better off just being more disciplined, going slower, doing less trades. And that's the consistent message that I've, uh, been, been, uh, saying here the last, uh, week and a half, two, two weeks or so. Um, so hopefully next week we begin to stabilize in these markets. They'll still be some disasters. There'll still be some great uh, earnings. I'm sure this ISRG is one to keep an eye on, um, as it had big earnings uh, a couple weeks ago, and, and it's um, you know starting to kind of consolidate those gains a little bit. I think this will be a good one to keep an eye on from a you know bigger stock standpoint. Uh, that we, you know, we want to see it stabilize, but here on the shorter term time frame, we're below this little support. We've got that five day moving average heading lower, so don't buy into these you know types of uh, stocks yet. Let them fully set up and keep your money safe because we continue to be in a uh, very dangerous environment. Thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone has a good weekend, and I'll talk to you uh, next week.